Hello, and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We are going to tier list all of the Commander Legends legends today. We've got a lot of work ahead of us. We've got 32 cards. We're doing the non-partner legends. But first, if you would, do us a favor. Go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We've got a goal in 2020, and Jake's going to tell you about it. Yes, we are trying to hit 10,000 subscribers in the year 2020. So if you're watching this video from the future and we have a million subs and we uh, have really nice lip injections and a nice following on <laughs> on Instagram, then everything worked out perfectly. But until then, Honestly. we're going to talk about all the cards today. None of the etched reprints. We're talking about none of the partners. We are uh, we're going to go over every single new card that can be your standalone commander from Commander Legends. This set has absolute heat like jeweled lotus which everybody is itching to tinker with uh people hate it people love I it i wish but jeweled we'll lotus could be my today. commander yeah you know it's gonna be a new avatar the jeweled lotus the sentient jeweled lotus <laughs> avatar on mtgo but uh no today we're gonna talk about the tier list and you know i think we've said the things if you want to check us out on patreon it might be a good fit for you as well uh access to the discord at any level it's a great community People are hanging out right now in the live stream, and uh, I guess let's uh, let's go ahead and get into this. Yeah, the last thing is that you can play along on this tier list. The link to this tier list is in the description below, and I just dropped it in the live chat for people hanging out while we're shooting here. Um, play along. Make it, save it, tweet it at us, tell us how wrong we are. We love having a discussion about this stuff. Jake, I'm going to swap over. Yep, sounds good. Okay, here we are at the tier list. Like Jake said, we've got 32 cards. These are the non-partner, non-reprint cards that are in Commander Legends Legends. And we're going to start here, right at the outset. Take these in alphabetical order. Abomination of Lanwar, Jake. One green, one black, one other. Elf Horror, star, star, power, toughness. Vigi Menace, Abomination of Lanwar's power and toughness are each equal to the number of elves you control plus the number of elf cards in your graveyard. So it's like they took a narrow commander and stapled some real good stuff onto it. Yeah, and uh, it reminds me of like a Golgari kind of like graveyard shenanigans, dredge kind of shenanigans. I think the colors are fine. Vigilance Menace is nice. It can swing, it can block. But again, this is one of those cards that's just, it's a little bit lackluster to me. I probably wouldn't put it at the helm of my deck. Although you're going to be able to get it on the board as early as turn two. And if you are using stuff like Golgari Grave Troll and ways to just fill your graveyard up very quickly in EDH, it could get out of hand. However, no protection built into it. If it had regenerate on it, it would just be absolutely sick and busted. Bonkers. But yeah. But uh, no, I think it's I think it's a fine card. I would rank it at a B or a C. Yeah. Yeah. So normally for me, C is reserved for very narrow cards. But in that narrowness, they would thrive like one way to build kind of things. Um, but the power level of it does bump it up to a little bit of a B for me. I mean, it's, you know, as far as elf commanders go, it ain't bad. Um, what do you think? B or C, Jake? Where was, I'm going to rank it at a, at a C. I, um, you know, Walter C. in chat says it's uncommon for a reason, and I have to agree. Yeah, absolutely. Amrith, the Lustrous is up next, Jake. I'll read this one. One blue, one white, one green, three other. Six, six, dragon flying. Whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library. If it shares a card type with that permanent, you may reveal that card and put it in your hand. So if you play a land, you reveal the top card of your library. It's a land, you put it into your hand. Same goes for enchantments, creatures, artifacts, etc. Sure, it's, um, you know, uh, it's expensive. It's one of those commanders that probably isn't going to see any kind of CEDH play, but some people like this kind of effect. I'm not a big fan of the effect, you're going to get the most value out of this if you're hitting lands and stuff like that, then I think that that's great. Again, something like a Sensei's Divining Top is really going to help this card thrive. But other than that, you know, I'm not a super big fan of it either. I would rank it at a B or a C as well. Yeah, I think for me, I would fall on C with Amarath, Amarath and be fine there just because of the... I mean, if it was like, look at the top... Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land permanent... Um, or if it was just focused on lands, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a land. What I'm what I'm getting at is I want it to be more consistent in one lane. Here it's like a little all over the place, but it could be some kind of crazy value engine. 
I don't know. It's just it's kind of a it's kind of a weird card for me. And yeah, um, I think know, it's I I think it's fine at C. I think yeah. it's a I think it's I'll always the talk art about, is really cool. I think it's a beautiful yeah. card. I love dragons. They're great. I don't think it's very flavorful. I, it really doesn't tell a story to me or like tell me what who this character is. It's it's kind of a weird design for me. Come it, closer, it, dear, and let me see <laughs> that bauble. I wish it said bubble. That would make. I've no got sense. a match for it somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. Let's look at around uh, me of next, the dead. Next, we've tide. got. Uh, one black, one blue, one other for Arami of the Dead Tide, legendary creature, Merfolk Wizard for a one four exile uh, tap exile cards from the top of your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have. Target creature, uh, target creature card in your graveyard gains encore until end of turn. The encore cost is equal to its mana cost. So, so pretty fun card here. You know, blue black. We love. Uh, mana rocks so you're going to want to figure out ways to get the most out of this card and be able to cast the big things that you put into uh your graveyard yeah absolutely any kind of graveyard fill strategy any kind of recursion strategy like this shouldn't you're not all in on this but this is a nice utility effect to have in some sort of blue black recursion graveyard deck right you need to really also target probably like at least 10 to 15 creatures that can end up in your graveyard that have sick etb triggers um death triggers or combat damage triggers and because yeah. i think that Big you could like get a little brave cheap. titan in, ch in chat right now exactly uh frost titan Pro stuff like yep. that 100%. yeah those are those are the kind of things that are you're really going to get the most out of this. You know, we uh, we talked about this card yesterday and we brought up, you know, Eldrazi. You know, we always talk about what are the big, you know, Eldrazi that you can put <laughs> into these kind of situations. I think it's going to be more difficult in blue black, but there are some very big think like the primordials, the sepulchral yeah. primordial, diluvium primordial cards like these. That's the kind of stuff that I think that is, is really going to shine. However, for an uncommon, I do think it's a pretty good card and I would rank it at a b i do like that four toughness again it's yeah. a very very cheap commander as well and it does have a unique effect and i think if uh encore is huge it's it's a three for one so if you get big right. uh etbs and ltb triggers then uh yeah it's pretty cool yeah absolutely um i i saw gray merchant of asphodel in the chat i think that's a good call too having an etb like that that's going to drain everybody down and give you some give you some damage and you get three copies of it if you've got three opponents that's pretty sick multiple multiple gray merchants are always going to be a good time next up we've got arkelos lagoon mystic this one was a little uh controversial when it was released because of its color identity most people thought it should have been bant and not sultai but what we've got is a sultai plus one two four turtle shaman as long as arkelos is tapped other permanents enter the battlefield tapped as long as Arclos is untapped, other permanents enter the battlefield untapped. So I get it, right? Like I look at it, I say, okay, we need to be able to tap this creature or untap this creature at will when we want to. And past that, it's taken advantage of stuff like Winter Orb so that yeah. you get to Stacks untap and pieces. they don't get to untap. Right. And, you know, past that, I, I see it and it's cute and it's cool. I don't know how much I want to play a deck like that. Number one, for like the love of the people sitting at the table around me. And number two, just for like length of game. I get the lore and the uh, flavor on this. I love, I think from a flavor I standpoint. Think it, it's the fact win. that it's a turtle right. is great because oh, a turtle yeah. is a slow, slow runner to win the race. Exactly. Um, so yeah, it's uh it's one of those cards. that's kind of hard to evaluate. And I do think, that um in some situations it's going to be really good and in other situations it's going to be kind of lackluster i would rank it at a b though because i do think there is some potential here with this turtle yeah it's uh, got some really strong like permission it's based niche victory, but good big yeah you know, victory strength kind of thing like you could probably build a very solid winning deck with this would it be fun to play i don't know would it be fun for others to play against i know the answer to that is probably not so past that you've got what an amulet of vigor that dies easier so it's not super impressive on that sure, aspect. But, i mean it is interesting for all of those lands that, that enter the battlefield uh tapped you know they like bounce a land and then they would normally enter the battlefield tap the bounce lands and stuff like that yeah. those are the kind of things that are really going to thrive excuse me with um uh, arclos but uh yeah, yeah, you know, 
It's an it's an interesting card. I think we should rank it at a B. I do think yeah. it is powerful. It could even maybe be like B point five, but we're not going to do that in this in this tier list. Yeah, let's just keep it at a B. Jake, it is a amulet figure, which is a very powerful, very very powerful card. Yeah, member of the channel, Jank summed it up in five words: high power, very low fun. And yeah. I think that's kind of where it sits at me for a B. Could be an A, but. We'll move on. Averna the Chaos Bloom is Teamer, straight across, straight up. Three mana for a 4-2 Elemental Shaman. As you cascade, you may put a land card from among the exiled cards onto the battlefield tapped. Jake, you know my opinions on this one. Go ahead and go ahead and hit me with it. Uh yeah, it belongs it belongs in the 99 of uh, of the deck. It's really hard to replace Maelstrom Wanderer with this card. And uh you know, with the Cascade, you really want to get the most out of the Cascade. So you're going to be playing other cards that have Cascade in this deck. Yeah. But, um, uh, dude, it's I, just so me, hard. It and it, dies, in it dies so easily as well. It's yeah, just... I, just, I get, I mean, look, for me, this goes into what? Because this is a 99 card. And what we're doing here is we're ranking these as commanders in Constructed Commander, not Limited Commander Legends or any other format. True commander, and I believe this belongs in the 99. I don't think this should be your commander. I feel like, you know, if you're not running Maelstrom Wanderer, you could make a pretty good case for that one. Is that Apex, that new one that says Cascade, 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 Cascade? Is that a yeah. legendary? I'm not even sure. Yeah, 2-4. Uh, Moto in chat says 2-4 would have been better, and I, I do agree. Yeah, I would have liked that better than the four two. Uh, I know Apex Devastator. That's who I was talking about. Apex Devastator is not a um, is not a legendary, and so this mm. one can't even be your commander. I'm thinking more like, I guess Maelstrom Wanderer. This belongs in the ninety nine of Maelstrom Wanderer, and I think that's why it's a what for me. Um, I wouldn't even I wouldn't rank it at at that low. Oh. Yeah, fine. We could keep it there. I would rank it at a D if D existed, but there's no D on this list. So sure. I think and what again, is, is this fine. Is, these are, you know, we're just ranking these as commanders. It's no, it's no aversion to, I mean, the card is dope in a Cascade deck. On the oh battlefield of a Cascade it, well, yeah. deck, it's I mean, great. 100% in Cascade, the card is fantastic. Yes. 100%. Um, let's look at Belb next. Belby? Yeah, Belb. Uh, Belby, Corrupted Observer, uh, very nice converted mana cost here. One green, one black for a 2-2. Two, two. Zombie Elf, at the beginning of each player's post-combat post main phase, that player adds two waste for each of your opponents who lost life this turn. So, um, definitely an interesting card. What, what do you think of this one, Joel? So, you say interesting, and to me, I... I translate that into how I feel about this card, which is this looks like it could either be garbage or one of the most broken things I've ever seen in my life. Free mana that you just have to figure out how to get access to. Two mana CMC for a legendary commander. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. it seems like it's got all of the fixings of a super dope card but i'm just i i just i don't know about it you know at the beginning of each player's post combat main phase player adds two for each of your opponents your opponents who lost life this turn so it encourages people to attack your opponents and not you hey if you want a soul rings worth of mana go attack them yeah but i just i don't i don't know i don't know see look and look at chat right now we've got this belongs at what right alongside people are gonna bust this this is op and so it is that is exactly what I'm talking about. The dichotomy of this card is wild to me. I don't know how to rank this one, Jake. I am teetering at B. I kind of want to put it right in the middle because it's one of these cards like I don't think I would ever play this. In these colors, I would probably not pick it. But it is a very political commander and that's a very fun way to to play commander is to build a politic kind of deck where people are going to be incentivized to not attack you. Uh, it gives man acceleration to opponents, which is really interesting as well. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I think, I think B is B is fair. Sorry for the little windows glitch there, everybody. Um, I think B is, I think B is a great place for that one to land. And 
you know, we'll wait on we'll wait on somebody that knows what they're talking about to uh, to tell us how to bust that card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. But again, green, black, a lot of combo potential, a lot of graveyard combo potential in these colors. I don't know if it's going to synergize as much with that. It's just not really a graveyard kind of kind of thing. It's more of like an aggro kind of thing. Right. So from that perspective however yes we do see zombie elf and chat which are two very relevant creature types it might be one of these cards again that belongs in the 99 it's it's a very political card but i don't know if it's strong enough to be at the helm however you cannot disregard a commander that has such a cheap converted mana cost uh with such a political effect either so it's yeah. it's an it's a very interesting card and i'm excited to see what it does yeah, I agree. Bell Borka Spectral Sergeant is up next. One white, one red, two other. Legendary Spirit Soldier, star five. Zero five starts at zero five. Note the converted mana cost of each card as it's put into exile. Bell's power is equal to the greatest number noted for it this turn. So at the end of every turn, power goes back down to zero. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library you may play that card this turn so on the bottom ability you've got a little bit of velocity in the style that we've been seeing in red lately yeah we've also got this you know you can grow the power level of the of the creature based on what you've got exiled and i mean so it's it's going to trigger itself right like unless it's a land that you exile off the top of your library you're going to get some power but then you can also like journey to nowhere on an Ulamog and it's a 10 five, you know what I'm saying? And so, no, and I, I don't I, know if, I, yeah, I completely get that. And what would be cool is if it could constantly pull from all of cards that are exiled each turn, and then you would be able to get some real raw power out of this. However, I think it's just, it's just very medium for me. Again, it doesn't really protect itself. However, that five toughness is really nice on the four power, but it comes in as like, a, it's like a nothing dude. So right. it's really, really tough to, to evaluate it, you know, for me, like higher than like a C or a B. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm actually, let's go with your first gut. Cause that's where I was on it already is down there. So far, we haven't really hit a lot of super powerful stuff. Let's see. God, I wish this up. card were good. <laughs> oh. read, read Blim I to love us. The art. All right. One red, one black, two other for Blim. Comedic genius. A 4 3 imp. Flying. Whatever Blim comedic genius deals combat damage to a player, that player gains control of target permanent you control. Then each player loses life and discards cards equal to the number of permanents they don't control, but don't. They control but don't own. Sorry, yeah. I read that incorrectly at the end. No, no worries. It's a very, very fun card, but yeah. It is. Uh, it is, and, but I'll I'll say it like I've said before in our other reviews of this card. It's a four mana, four, three flyer, and that's it. Unless, unless you deal combat damage with it. So that's one strike against it for me. And you need to have a target permanent that either will be a nothing for them, like it needs to be a net zero, and also hard for them to get rid of. Like you don't want to donate a treasure token because they can just sack it. You want to donate mm -hmm. like a thrill. At the worst, you want to donate a thrill because there's a zero one, it's on the ground so it can't block blim, and you're going to lose life and discard cards equal to how many of those thralls I can give you. At best, you want to be donating stuff that's hurting you, stuff like Demonic Consultation or whatever that card yeah. is. Or a card like that, that says choose one that hasn't been chosen that ends with you lose the game. You want right. to donate stuff like that for sure. And I do like the evasion that's built into the card with the flying. Um, I, I think that's great. If it didn't have that and it had to get through on the ground, that would just be awful. But again, in a in a game of commander, getting through in the air is tough as well. And I know that a lot of people don't really value spot removal, and that might change as we're starting to see Jeweled Lotus enter the meta, and uh, people are going to want to be more disruptive with certain kind of combos. Maybe Blim is going to be better than I than I think it is, but it's really hard for me to rate this anything above a C in in this particular tier list. I, love I don't want to put it at what, but no. Um, I think it I think it is 
fun at least and right. that keeps it out of the what category i think you're going to be having a blast if you can pull off any kind of combos with yeah, this exactly this is kind of the opposite this is kind of the opposite right of what jenks said earlier about the turtle um low power high fun instead of high power low fun yeah and i, I think, think that's, that's a great fair. design place to space to explore man i think that there's more more width in people that in the in the audience of commander of people that want to play fun decks that are power level three four and five then there are i want to i want to get out my arkelos hard lock power level nine deck i don't sure. want to play against your turn three winter orb i'm good <laughs> right exactly exactly and there are some people that do want to play get against that that want to see you know can my deck get out of that that early on lock can i force of will my way out of it and i think that's what we're seeing with commander is players are separating into two camps um i know that it's already happened with uh, edh and cedh but i think right. we're just going to see that more definitive line especially as cards like gaius cradle and best in slot spells you know start racing into the stratosphere we're just going to have you know, more definitive uh, power levels of, of decks. And I think that that's a great way to play Magic. Magic is built in so many different ways. You have Popper, you have Modern, you have Legacy. Like, there's so many different formats to play. And so, um, yeah, I think that, you know, maybe Blim will do something there. But until then, it will sit at C. Ansel, member of the channel, absolutely right. It is not going to be great in draft just because of the lack of support in the set. I yeah, do exactly. think that in the in the I want to say in the 99, but I think in limited, it's in the 59. In the 59 and limited um, of a Svet deck, uh, Tash. Who's the Who's the Planeswalker partner? I'm pronouncing his name wrong. Zaz. Who is it? <laughs> Zaz is a Batman enemy. Anyway, I think he would be good in there because you can make throws I would, and donate the throws. I would 100% run this in my limited deck. Just straight yeah. up, if I need a 4-3 flyer for four in these colors, I mean, there's no downside on on Blimp, you know? Right. So it's like, they're going to have to remove it. It is a win con and limited, so. Let's look at Captain Vargas Wrath. One red, one blue for a 1-1 one, one orc pirate. Whenever it attacks, pirates you control get plus one, plus one until in a turn. For each time you cast a commander from the command zone this game, I already see you shaking your head, Jake, and that's because I think we agree on this one. This is... Part of the 99 of a pirate deck and has no, no, no chance of being yeah. a true You lose commander. all of your best pirates if you, um, I shouldn't say all of the best ones, but you lose very important, very good pirates when you drop black. Right. Uh, so there's really no reason. I mean, red, blue, you're normally playing like storm or spells. Uh, it, it really forces you into like a red, blue aggro. It's just like, it's kind of gross. I don't like it very much, but fantastic in the 99 of a pirate deck but i would comfortably oh, yeah. rank it at what like you've already done yeah yeah i mean i think that one's that one's an easy one um it it might have some potential in limited if you need it if you've got a quick deck and you think you can burn everybody down but everybody knows yeah. playing in a four-person pod that's a very hard line to take colfner let's the last talk about you. uh yeah let's do this uh colfner the last you uh junk and three other for vigilance and reach Whenever Colfiner, the less you or another creature you control dies, return up to one other target creature card with lesser toughness from your graveyard to your hand. And that is a 3-7 Treefolk Shaman. So very cool card. Love the art on this. Just fantastic. However, for me, I'm thinking about these colors. I, you know I love these colors. I play these colors. I hate white green, but when you add black to it, I am all <laughs> in. Uh, I love playing Carador. I think that Doran is is great. It's hard for me to see this replacing uh, Carador or Nathroy. I think the card is really fun, but um, I think it belongs in the 99 again. Yeah. yeah, I think that... And, you know, I hate I hate doing this. I want to preface my next statement by saying I hate doing this. Whenever all these new commanders get printed in any set, you know, whether it's Zendikar, regular block set, or a special commander base set, or the commander precons, whatever, I always look at these cards and I go, okay, all right, Abzan, graveyard deck, is it better than Nathroy? No. So I just want to play Nathroy. And I hate doing that. I hate eliminating a new commander, especially one with such cool art <laughs> that it, it that's just come out. I hate eliminating it just on the basis that 
you know, it doesn't it, it doesn't beat Nithroi for me, or it doesn't beat a commander that's already doing the same thing. Um, you know, it's returning target creature card with lesser toughness, so you gotta go in on this high toughness creature, and normally that means the payoff is very low power. Um, you can put Death Touch on him to help you with that, or you can run the Siege Tower, right? And just yeah. call it I good like on Durin. toughness deck. Yeah. <sighs> It's a cool card, but it encourages graveyard shenanigans, and there are other commanders that do graveyard shenanigans better. However, yep. I'm not going to rank it poorly because it's still a good, solid card, right. and I would put it right at the middle of the road, man. Yep, I'm with you on B. Real quick before we move on, Lou Mizzle, Liu Mizzle, Victor, and Rothadern. Thank you for those subscriptions. Hitting that subscribe button really helps us out. Let's move on to Gen Arcanum Weaver. I'll read this one, Jake, and let you get first shot at this one. One black, one yeah. white, one red. Mardu across the board. Easy peasy. Three mana for a 2-3. You can pay Mardu, tap it, sack an enchantment, and return an enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. I want to build it. And I think that means that I'm going to rank it uh, probably pretty high up. I love the converted mana cost on it. I like the colors. It's colors that don't really do very well a lot of the time. I shouldn't say they don't do well. They do well sometimes, but it's it's they have trouble thriving. And I really do look for a good Mardu commander. I love big, huge, beefy enchantments like Overwhelming Splendor, uh, Cruel Reality, Captive Audience. These enchantments in these colors are great. And uh, you and I discussed the card last night, and we were talking about it, and we were thinking, you know, what are the best enchantments that you want to sacrifice? And you want to sacrifice stuff like, you know, like Treacherous Blessing, the kind of stuff that's going to hurt you after you cast it. Cards that that or doesn't say, do anything else. Yeah, exactly. So, like, if you're running one of those enchantments that says, you know, choose a mode that hasn't been chosen, and the first three are heat, and the last one says you lose the game, well, make sure to sacrifice that enchantment before <laughs> it happens. It's all built into the commander here, which is really nice. And what's cool is there are great enchantments. Um, I think we looked at Sinister Concoction was one of them that is going to allow you to... Uh, mill a card off the top of your library, discard a card, so you can get rid of some of these huge, huge enchantments early on and then reanimate them from the yard. So I think it's a really cool, really fun card that's going to have a lot of synergy to build around. We had and, a, uh, uh, Jake and I had a discussion about this commander. I, I was telling people before the stream started, we, we sat and talked at length about this commander because I think both of us are very fascinated with the build and it speaks to Jake as like an actual build. So we were exploring some of the options. Jake, I thought of these cards after we finished that conversation, the trials, they come in, they do a thing and they were built around the whole cartouche idea in Amon Ket, but you just ignore the rest of that and you've got an enchantment that's cheap that comes in and does something and then is ready to be sacrificed and return to the and return something crazy to the battlefield you've got trial in the colors of this you've got trial of ambition which makes an opponent sack a creature trial of zeal which is not as good three to a creature or player and uh trial of solidarity creatures you control get plus two plus one and get yeah. until end of turn they're not dope but trial of ambition would definitely fit into this deck as one of those enchantments you play it it's there you can sacrifice it return you know captive audience to the battle well, and then the other thing that we early. talked about last night was just play all of the best cheap enchantments, authority exactly. of the councils, and those kind of things. And if you do not need those enchantments, those one cost, those two cost enchantments, just sacrifice them to get the big ones back from your graveyard that are going to help you win, win the game. If you reanimate a uh, captive audience on somebody early in the game, it's probably going to put them out of the game. It's going to give you a lot of heat on your side. They're going to have to discard their hand. Um, yeah, I think the card is good, and, you know, I think it might be the first A on the list, just because it is fun, it's going to drive the price of Replenish, so maybe we shouldn't put A on there, but, no, I mean, it's a, <laughs> no, it's a, it's a great card, I think it's a fun card that people are going to want to tinker with, and again, being able to um, build into a fun theme like this, uh, it seems, it seems like, it's got some potential, so I'd rank yeah, it at, would, a, at a B or an A. Yeah, I would sit B probably, but if I you're think saying that... B, I will I will comfortably go B. I have okay. a lot of there's a lot of I'm excited about the card. You, exactly. And I'm passionate Ex about it. I, I know but you love this commander. I'm not gonna go over the top and say it's an A. I'm not trying to like 
freaked people out here. Like, oh yeah, Jank Jank pointed out Rancor esque aura stuff that's going to come back to you when it leaves the battlefield. That's a cool idea. So you sack it and it's automatically coming back. That's a cool idea. Also, the fact that this in that etched foil, Jake, this card in particular with all these uh, light lines in the art, that's going to look pretty sick. Honestly, I think that's going to be some dope art. So in chat, to... it bring back the gods. Yes, it would. Yep, exactly. Absolutely yes. would. Any enchantment, enchantment creature. Whatever you got. Nostro, Voice of the Crags. We got a weird one here. Jeskai plus one for a 3-3 three, three Chimera. You can tap it to choose one. X is the number of spells you've cast this turn. Scry X. Nostro deals X damage to target creature. Or you gain X life. It's a toolbox, and it kind of looks janky on the surface, but it's definitely an A, and let's talk about why. Uh, Storm and Commander, baby. Yeah, it's a Storm Commander, and it's also... All the effects are good, honestly. Oh, yeah. All the effects are good. Okay, so there is a combo. Jake, what is that legendary that we talked about last night when we were prepping this? Elsha? Is that right? Yeah, there's there's infinite combos that are built around the card. What I really like about it is you could have a, a player that's just about to kill you, and you can just storm off, go infinite, and gain infinite life, and now your life total is no longer part of the the situation for the rest of the game. Your opponents now have to mill you. I just think it's so it's so strong, dude. And it's so funny because when we first looked at the card, I was just like, I don't know, man. I was like, I don't know. It just doesn't look it doesn't look that good. But then once you see the once you see the infinite El Elsha combo with uh Sensei's Divining Top, it's just uh, and Cloud Key. Yeah, it's it's just shenanigans, man. So I want to show you this combo real fast because this is representative of just one combo in Jeskai colors that can give you infinite storm count. And once you've got infinite storm count with of the crags here, you're scrying infinitely so you can get to the bottom of your deck. dealing. You're killing any creature infinitely and or you're gaining infinite life. I mean, once you gain infinite life, like you said, Jake, aren't we just like, all right, are we moving on? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I think it does become a matter of mill. You just take that that win condition leaves the game for your opponents. You know, you're right. no, they're no longer focused on can they kill you. They now have to mill you. And uh, I think it's just one of those cards that's going to be really frustrating. And like I said, it's funny because it's just a toolbox uh, general that has three pretty relevant effects on it. Thank God one of them doesn't say target player. It I mean, would just if it said target player busted. you would win. Yeah. Untapped yeah, creature over. effects would happen. So this combo is you you can cast the top card of your library if it's a non creature non land and you can cast as though it had flash. So what you do is you have Sensei's Divining Top, which is a one cost artifact. You have something like Cloud Key and there's a lot of effects like this that have artifacts cost one less to play, effectively making uh top a zero cost spell. Uh with Elsha on the battlefield and top costing zero you can tap top to put it back on your library cast it with elsha from the top of your library from zero tap it to put it back on top of your library and go infinite that way it leads to yeah. an infinite storm count um and that will give you an infinite amount of scry an infinite amount of x to a creature or an infinite amount of life yeah uh, luke brings up brash taunter and yeah effects like those like stuffy doll Things like that, anything that's going to deal damage to a creature and that creature reflects that damage at any target, that kind of card is going to really play well in this as, in this deck as well because you could just storm count and then shoot that creature, kill, kill a player. Storm right. count, shoot that creature, kill a player. And so uh, if you can untap this creature and do it again, I mean, oof. There is... It's this turn too. So, I mean, you can just... So... Oof. For me, things that keep this from going up into S or God tier is like Scry, and it doesn't give you a draw. Deals X damage to creatures. There's no player attached to that. And life gain, it's like life gain is fine. Um, you know, Jake pointed out that, you know, you're picking at this player the whole time, and then they Scry off with some, you know, 20, 30, or limited only by their library size, which is a lot of storm combos in Jeskai yeah, yeah, yeah. and Commander. And you just go back up to 40 like that. And so, you know, it's probably best, and I'm seeing this a lot in chat, yeah, just choose Elsha as your commander. Put this in the 99. But I still think that as a toolbox, this is 
at least better than everything we're looking at here. And so for me, it goes it goes into an A. Yeah, and we won't have that much discussion for each card, but this is just, it's worth discussing because it is, uh, there's a lot that you can do with it. Absolutely. Gore Moldrak, Amphenologist is up next. It's Simic plus one for a 3-2 scout. You and Permanence, how you control, have protection from Salamanders. And at the beginning of your end step, each player who controls the fewest creatures creates a 4-3 blue Salamander warrior creature token. Fun, political, so for me it keeps it out of what? Other than that, low power, uh, kind of silly. It's, it's kind of a meme, but yeah. it's really, I do think it's a fun card and yeah, it's just like fill the board up with salamanders. Yeah, it's absolutely. Nice. I think I'm I think I'm with you on C. It is fun, and that's what keeps it out of what for me. It's obviously not one that I'm like. Well, you just got to well, think in Simic, there are so many other powerful oh, commanders, so it's really hard to be like I'm trying to play a competitive but, good Simic deck, and it, and Gore Moldrak is my is my commander. Now, granted, if you have. Uh, effects on the battlefield like doubling season or anything that's going to give you extra tokens when these come on the battlefield you can definitely get more umph out of your salamanders than your uh, mm -hmm. opponents can but uh yeah it's it's very medium to me yeah it 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 doesn't go into the 99 of any specific deck either and so that's another reason why it keeps me out of what if you want to play a salamander silly deck you got to play yeah. this commander there's not one i would be like no don't play go or play salamander king yeah. So it, it, it lives at C for me, and that's where we'll where we'll sick on that one. Tell us about Hamza or Hamza. Yeah, Hamza, Guardian of Arishin, one white, one green, four other, legendary creature, elephant warrior, five, five. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature you control with one, one counter on it, and creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature you control with a one, one counter on it. We talked about it last night. It seems kind of spicy. What do you think about it, Joel? So it does seem spicy. I mean, but again, in your perfect world, right? Like you're not going wide with this deck because you want to go up or you at least want to have a plus one, plus one counter on each creature on the battlefield, right? Because you need those payoffs world, in the deck to, yeah. to you're splitting. It's like you're splitting strategies. Right. Exactly. How, so it is so good with what well, the this second card ability. Can do. The second ability is reducing a creature by one, similar to Animar's ability, right? Where how many counters are reducing colorless mana costs of, of stuff. And so it's like a poor man's, you know, Selesnia Animar in that regard, but it's got to be not on it, but on multiple creatures you control. Extra plus one, plus one counters on those creatures don't do anything for it. And so... I think that, I mean, you have to get a line of creatures out that have plus one, plus one counters on it. Then you got to drop Hamza for cheap. And then in that same turn, you got to be ready to be like, I've got 10 creatures with plus one, plus one counters on them. Ulamog, slam it, you know, fingers to the sky. And, I, you know, for me, it's so funny. And I've said this before, how I come back to, well, I guess this is good if you cheat out Eldrazi. <laughs> it's like, that's the strategy well, yeah, of and we all always these say that. jank decks is cheat out Eldrazi. That's the that's the main strategy here. But uh, Punisher I, notes, like... modular creatures, anything that's going to enter with counters on it, you know, stuff oh, yeah. like Walking Ballista, Hangar Back Walker, that kind of stuff is 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 notable and, and what's Ansel really says cool that about x cost it, creatures they will get reduced so you'll be able to cast x cost creatures for more that's right and it, it doesn't have one of those clauses that says x cannot be less than uh one yeah, yeah. or anything like that so x can be zero in these uh situations if the board is full enough you can just cheat out anything in your hand that's just colorless so that is definitely worth worth noting and i do think this is the best commander if we're going to bring up eldrazi today if we're going to bring up you know the best commander out of these cards for animating eldrazi or getting eldrazi out early i think this is probably the card to do it so you you need to have enough counter based creatures in the deck and then enough payoffs for once your board is filled with counters to be able to cast those creatures for cheap and then overwhelm your opponents with those cards so um yeah, I think it's I think it's very strong though, despite the fact that uh, you know there are very good green white commanders. I think they're that some people will pick it. I would put it at A, dude. I would put it at A or B just because there's so much acceleration yeah, that I'll this card be on this. I, I can see a B. You know, it does represent some acceleration, but even then, I mean, that second ability is what you want. What are you doing accelerating out of vanilla five five? Your opponents don't care about that. 
but they do care if you can cheat in some gigantic colorless creature uh you know drop a drop blightsteel colossus for zero that's excellent return but that's kind of what you gotta gotta aim the whole strategy at or, I'm comfortable or a big be. walking ballista you know yeah, and yeah, yeah. and granted in this deck you're gonna be um playing uh, a lot of uh, i would be playing any kind of like hardened scales doubling season anything that's going to double my counters uh or actually no that it is an effect because it's each creature never mind you don't that's it's the, not going to matter thing. with it that's exactly. what it is you yeah. only want you don't need to spend too much mana or effort putting a lot of counters on your creatures you just need to get one on each yeah reduction counts for x as well which is notable yeah yeah it's interesting b is fine i think it's b is fine i yeah. can't i can't rank it lower than b because i think it's a great card now here's an s and one then everybody green. left that. and then everybody <laughs> one, left that. No. one green one red one uh two other for a one four hans erickson Whenever Hans Eriksson attacks, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it onto the battlefield. Tapped an attacking, defending player, or a planeswalker they control. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. When you put a creature card onto the battlefield this way, it fights Hans Eriksson. And right, like, you start this conversation by going, Well, uh, with Sensei's Divining Top and Dark Steel Plate, th this is a lot of potential. That's my Wombo <laughs> combo, dude. Hans Eriksson, Dark Steel Plate, dude. Wombo combo. Um, yeah, I think Punisher has it. Flavor S plus card C. Yeah. I think that that's fair. In green, red. Lower. You can you can ramp out some big stuff, and it would be really fun to get Hans on the battlefield. Uh, we made this note yesterday. Cards like Anger, uh, enchantments like Fervor. Like, you're going to want something that gives all of your creatures haste. Because if you are using Hans... You want him to be able to swing the turn he comes on the battlefield or else people are going to try and kill him. I would imagine. Or maybe they don't. Maybe they just let him sit there. It's it's fun. It's a fun card. Yeah, but for me, you're just not going to beat Locus of Rage Omnath. You're not going to beat Xenagos God of Revels with this like ridiculous... I mean, again, high flavor, low power. Yeah. I haven't... I, I'm I'm very what on this one? I like that it looks like Saffron Olive, kind of. That's a cool meme as well. I just, I don't understand. I, It's a cute card. This is a, <laughs> this is a what for me? No, C. Okay, fine. We'll put it in C to calm no, the masses. No, put it back in what? It feels weird once you get to see. <laughs> it felt weird once I saw it there. I was like, no, no, get it away. We will leave it at what and move on. Emoti, Celebrant of right. Bounty. I'll read this one. One blue, yeah. one green, three other. Cascade, three one. Spells you cast with converted mana cost six or greater have cascade. Dude, hands down, best uncommon we're going to review today, in my I, opinion. I'm a little surprised that a card that is perceivingly, if that's a word, this bonkers, is an uncommon. So you build this with ramp and big stuff, right? Like all of your... You're cascading with Emoti. It's got to cost less. So you want to make the bulk of your one, two, threes, and fours ramp spells so that mm -hmm. you pre-ramped to get a Modi out early, hopefully. Turn three, turn four. You cast a Modi. You cascade into another ramp. And then you get going drawing cards with whatever draw engines you've built in. And you're casting all of your stuff with six or greater. That's cascading into more stuff in your deck. I really think that this is a bonkers card and it's wild to me that it's uncommon yeah i dude i it's that toughness man it's that three one that's what's holding the card back uh but i do think you know and you brought this up as well you know a lot of people don't run as much spot removal as they need to so yes while this dies to like pestilence or pyroclasm or any kind of effect like that or like yeah. ev uh, like most creatures die to board wipes Exactly. This will be eating if your opponents are just running, you know, premier spot removal like a swords or like a path or like very specific, you know, uh, 
removal, then it's going to be eating one of those. And in blue green, it's so easy to get this back out. And honestly, you don't really mind if it dies because you want to get more of those cascade triggers going. So right. the cards you want to avoid with this, like we talked about, are counter spells as they're just going to fizzle in the moment. So if you are cascading into like ramp or other mana rocks, then great. But if you yeah, cast it's something... Like that, huge, it's any cascade deck, right? You want to build yeah. permanence into it or spells yeah. that can have an effect regardless of when they're cast. Um, um, you know, it's it's obviously, yes, 100% in the 99 of Maelstrom Wanderer. Does it overtake Maelstrom Wanderer as a Cascade Commander? Of course not. But I think as a standalone commander, this also can have some viability. If you just want to build a Naga Druid, you know, led deck and you want to lean more towards flavor i think it's a little and short what's cool of a is the for cascade me. is built into this card right. you don't have to worry about playing other stuff with cascade sure you can but if you just want to run big stuff and right. have this at the helm of your deck you're going to get a lot of value out of that we talked about you know you cast like an ulamog and then it cascades into i don't know a freaking terra stomper or uh end raise forerunners and then that cascades into I don't know. I don't know if all the converted mana costs are right, but you know what I'm trying to say. There's sure, just sure. like a nice windfall of, of effects that can happen from this commander. I, I would rank it at like a B or an A, dude. Yeah, I think it, I, like, I like for it me, a. it's good enough to be an A, but um, no, I, I, I like it today. I think we're, B as well. we're I could. gonna get yelled at in the, in the chat fine. and in the comments for that one being an A, but I just love it. And so that's where yeah. we're gonna roll on it. Jared Carthalian, True Air. White, green, red for a 3-3 three, three human warrior. Enters a battlefield, target opponent becomes a monarch. You cannot become the monarch this turn. If damage would be dealt to Jared while you're the monarch, prevent that damage and put that many plus one plus one counters on it. Flavor, S plus 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 plus. This card is designed in a way that tells a story. And that is so, that is so to me. Having a card like on its own with its game mechanics from a mechanical standpoint, tell a story. God, I that's so good to me. Now, let's talk about from a gameplay. We looked up last night when we were prepping this vid. There are no instant speed like you become the monarch. So you're not going to be the monarch, at least to my understanding, at least from what I could find. There's not a way to make yourself the monarch until your next turn comes all the way around. So... Once that happens, you have to untap with Jared still on the battlefield, and then you should have a way, obviously, to become the Monarch. You need to make sure you can become the Monarch when it comes back around and you're untapped. Because once you're the Monarch, you're sitting pretty solid. Jared can't be damaged. Jared gets bigger when he is damaged. I mean, talk about Blasphemous Act hitting the battlefield with Jared on the battlefield. Yeah, blasphemous act. Any kind of any kind of damage effects. It still he still gets exiled. But like we were just talking about, you know, um, low converted mana cost, easy to build back up. It very it very much has like a Highlander kind of feel. I love the art on it. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the card is great. I really do think that it's great. And because of the power level that is built in, that you can't become the monarch that turn that's fine if you're already the monarch you have to give monarch away then you have to get monarch back and um chat there with the help throne of the high city can make yeah. you monarch at instant speed this is exactly what i was looking for but couldn't find last night pay for sack it you become the monarch so with this card obviously it's it does say you cannot become the monarch this turn so you have to pass turn but on your opponent's like upkeep or i guess whenever makes the most sense play wise to become the monarch sack this it becomes a monarch you become the monarch jared is now the true heir to the throne of the high city which love that flavor even more and he's able to start just getting counters put on him from a prevention of damage yeah i'm you know this is a cool card to me its power level stands to be seen it's not one that you know you know from a competitive standpoint it's not going to do a lot until you're already all the way back around and you have fulfilled some stuff you yeah know, even like like i look at something like nostro that we rated at an a and if you drop anger into the battlefield 
onto the into the graveyard, excuse me. You'll be able to use that ability plus, you know, any other effects that give your give your creature haste. You'll be able to you'll be able to use that immediately. Jared, even if you can use it immediately, can't go attack and get you monarch this turn. You can't become the monarch this turn. And so and you've lost monarch on the ETB. So you can't even like get it, become it, cast Jared and you're like, "Haha, I cheated it." it doesn't work. Yeah, it's I think it's dude I think it's one of those cards that, again, the flavor is excellent, but I think the oh, yeah. power level of the card is pretty medium, and I would rank it at like a, at like a B, honestly. Yeah, flavor and I might is be here. Wrong. I think flavor's here, actual card strength is here, and so it falls at a B for me because I think it'll be really fun to play. Yeah, I think it would be fun to play as well. But um, let's talk about Jury, Master of the Review. One black, one red. Legendary creature, human, shaman, 1-1. One, one. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a 1-1 one, one counter on jury, master of the review. When jury dies, it deals damage equal to uh, equal to its power to any target. So um, if you can figure out a way to build an unlimited sacrifice outlet, you can put a lot of damage on or a lot of counters onto jury. But I think it's one of those cards that just feels like a Dreadhorde Butcher as my general and although it is very, very cheap and cost efficient, I think it's one of those cards that's just really, really a poor choice as the as the commander. I would put it's it a at like top a C. tier. I think it is a top tier. I think it's got to fall into what for me because of the same things that we talked about with the pirate. This is like top tier in the 99 of an aristocrats deck that's got sure. black and red. This card is primo. You always love seeing it. You set up your little sack combo and you are off to the races. But I don't. I would never recommend that someone run this. I would try. I would try and steer someone into a different commander that does this, but better and on a longer scale for this type of deck. And say, if you yeah. love this card, put it in the ninety-nine of that deck. Yeah, and maybe you know, maybe there's like some hidden power level right here. But I just, I, I just don't think that I'm seeing it. There's not. This isn't Nostro or Belby. This one's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of like. If you set this stuff up, you'll be good to go. Real quick before we move on, Thomas Smedley, thank you for that subscription. Really appreciate it. If you're hanging out, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as we move on to Kanji Sky Warden. One blue, one white, three other for a 3-3 three, three flying Vigi. When it attacks, attacking creatures with flying get plus 2, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. And when it blocks, blocking creatures with flying get plus 0, oh, plus 2 until end of turn. So it's 5-3 five, five, on the attack with all your birds becoming 3-X's. Yeah. And it's a blocker, a 3-5 blocker on the block, and all your birds become oh, X3s, you know? Uh, yeah, very medium, again. Uh, for me, it just in my opinion, it feels very medium. Um, it's a solid flyer. I mean, look, if you can... Yeah. If you can oh, in be... limited? 100% going in my deck, oh. but we're not talking about limited. We're talking no. about... This is an S in counting. limited. Yeah. I'm yeah. a huge fan of this in the limited of this set. I would definitely pick this high, high, high. I'm talking yeah, about but... the helm of a constructed commander deck. If you, the best possible case with this one, right, is you have a lot of bird tokens, a lot of one, one flying birds or one, one flying spirits for that matter would work. Um, and then it attacks, you know, staring down 10, one, one flying birds is scary, but not terrifying, but staring down 10, three, one flying birds is an absolute nightmare that I'm not interested in living through. So yeah. for that, it's pretty cool. But I think that, you know, it's it's just kind of a medium, medium commander for flyers when you could be picking something better. And I hate that we keep coming back to that, but just like I, I do think it's got some viability. It's not just a what for me, and I, I think it's I think it's a B for me, maybe a C, but I do think I it's wouldn't better even than put these. it at a B, dude. It's great that it's flying in vigilance, yeah. But and there's caveats to every card. Oh well, if you have uh, you know, sure. say whatever card on the battlefield, Tashar, whatever. What is that? What is that bird that gives everything but itself hexproof? Why can't I think of that card? I, I hate that I can't think of that card. Well, I don't think that's something to hate yourself for. Scryfall so high, exists. So he, so S. It's an S name. It gives everything but itself hexproof, so you have to kill it first. Yes, if it's on the battlefield, then great. But for me, it's just like at by itself, I'm just going to shoot it with a Doom Blade. Right. Yeah, exactly. Shalai. That's what it is. Thank you, Jank. That's the it, card. I don't have to freak out. 
Well, you you'll do that anyway. It it does die. I mean, it passes the. It doesn't pass the lightning bolt. Oh, test. It, is, it does. That's right. It has green built into the activation. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, it so is an angel. You get, angel, two, you not get a bird. two colors. Yeah, for sure. But regardless, it's a. If you want to build a flying commander deck, it's a solid choice for your commander there. Um, you know, there are some other options there, but there aren't a ton of options. You'd be surprised. And so for me, I think I'm, I'm more in B, but if you're more in C, I'm, I'm comfortable falling down to C. I'm on the lower part of B anyway. Next up, we've got a fun little rabbit wizard, a blue and a white for a one, three rabbit wizard. Tap it. Each player may draw a card. Then each player who drew a card this way gains one life. This is, this is a group hugging so rabbit good. wizard that I think has got quite a lot of potential because this is the kind of deck you build up. You know, you're you're playing your pillow fort enchantments and nobody's attacking you because you're giving Propaganda, everybody life and cards. Propaganda, ghostly prison, right. and authority just, of the councils. Exactly. You go slow like that and then suddenly you've got this pillow fort built up around you and, you know, you're creating angels off of your, uh, off your Luminarch Ascension and you're getting tokens from your from your tithe and you're drawing cards off heuristic study and you've just kind of out of nowhere you're like king of the castle and nobody can really poke through to you and you're still just like all right who wants a card tap <laughs> yeah and then eventually you know we were talking about this last night but you find these infinite combos and what's great about these colors and it's so cheap it's so efficient it's such oh. a political card uh it keeps your hand full it keeps everybody else's hand full we can go a couple different lines. You can play stuff like Force Fruition and just make sure that everybody keeps drawing cards. You can make sure that you're running stuff like Thassa's Oracle and uh, Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, that are going to allow you, if you draw out your library, in order to win the game. It also allows you to run all of the best-in-slot premier CE EDH counter spells like Force of Will, Mana Drain, uh, just simply by having blue. You yeah, run stuff it, like this with it, Temple Bell. Um, I love that. So for me, this card would be a little bit lower if it was any more than this two mana. I think the two mana is what makes this so attractive to me. Being a Temple Bell plus some gain life on a two mana, even though it's a creature, you're in the colors to protect it. I mean, for me, Quain is an A, and it's one of the cards that I'm most looking forward to building. Oh, it is a... It, um... Jank does mention in chat that it is a May, so opponents don't have to draw cards in certain sure. situations. Um, but there are, like when we brought up Force Fruition, there are ways to make your opponents draw cards. But I do think it's a, a very, very powerful commander. It's hard for me to rank it lower than A. Some people in chat are saying S. I don't know if I see the S potential, but maybe I'll be very wrong. Um, I do like the converted mana cost of it. I love that three toughness. I could rank it at a solid A. And if it ends up being an S, then I'll be like, well, you know what? I was wrong. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's where I'm at with it. Lathiel, the bounty is done. You want to read us this one? Yes, one white, one blue, two other for a 2-2 two, two lifelink legendary creature, Unicorn. At the beginning of each end step, if you gain life this turn, distribute up to that many plus one plus one counters among any number of other target creatures. So green white commander here that would be at your helm. So you have to push out the idea of like Sigarda or uh, Shalai that we just talked about. And you have to think, well, I'm going to run this unicorn instead. Is it going to be better? Uh, it's tough for me to say yes. The one thing working in its favor i guess is that it does count how many life you've gained and not it's it's not you know if you've gained life this turn put a plus one plus one counter to three plus one plus one counters across creatures because i think that would really push it down into a jankier territory for me i'm i'm hesitant i'm between b and c on this you know it's it's got it does bring lifelink with itself but it is a four cost hopefully you're playing this on what turn three if you're a green deck minimum um you know it's a unicorn which we've gotten lots of love for unicorn tribe this year i think more than any individual yep. year we've gotten more unicorn love i just don't i for me i don't think that this should be your commander. No, I, think that I don't this think could be really that's good fair. in the ninety nine. Yeah, that's fair. I think I think like nitpicking and trying to make it like 
better than than it is. It's just yeah. let's not force it. It's just a C. I don't think it's a what, but yeah. uh, if I'm getting a two two, uh, I mean you just have to be making sure that after the end step you're getting that that ability right. if you really want to get the most out of the card. I would rank it at a C. It's fine. Yeah, and again, look, y'all, we're ranking these as commanders of constructed full-on commander decks in the 99 again this card is a house this card this rakdos card, it is good house, in trust Donnie. Card, i agree house, yeah, cascade yeah, yeah. card house a lot of these on this what line except for hans erickson which i think is a meme totally meme a lot of these cards are really good in commander just not as your commander themselves. i'll yeah. show you one card that's good as your commander themselves, and that's liesa shroud of dusk a black two white and two other for a five five angel Instead of paying your commander tax, you can pay two life that many times, and it is a may. Um, yes. No, no, it is. Rather than pay two for each previous time you've cast the spell from the commands on this time, pay two life that many times. So it's not a may. You never no, not pay, a may. You have to do it. So it forces you into this. gaining life, right. which is fine, because in these colors you can do it very, very, very well. Flying, flying lifelink, and you've got a little come ball council of allocation They are best. You there. are right. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose two life. Jake, this is... So, you with Arcane Weaver, I am that much excited about Liesa. And I'm. this is the first deck I'm building. I love this card. I think it's a house. Kambal simps so hard for Liesa. You don't even know. And uh, there's just so much of this effect with taxes and with tribute what's the what's the one mana spell one mana ability static that you can pay as things come into the battlefield that is that is a lot of what you can do with this kind of deck i just think it's a house no i think it's a great card yeah it, extort is what you were looking for extort. Uh, thank you yeah chat saving the day there i couldn't put it together because of how you described it but now i understand it yes uh, Extort is good. We talked about Exquisite Blood, Sanguine Bond, all of these cards as well. I think we can rank the card comfortably at an A. I yeah. know you want to rank it at, at an S, but um, I, I don't happy. think we I'm need to... Yeah, I don't think we need to overthink how powerful that ability is that's going to allow you to pay life instead of uh, paying the commander's cost as it goes up in, in price. Uh, yeah, I think it's a very, very strong, powerful card. Let's talk about this huge, confusing card, uh, Nivinural Urborg Tyrant, that Whoa. some people love and other people do not. Nice pronunciation on that. I've never heard it pronounced that way. And when you said it, I went, well, that just makes sense. Nivinural? Yeah, Nivinural. that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, I've well, that's how I pronounce it. it. Nivinural. <laughs> Nivinural. Uh, yeah, well, however. I like the emphasis Esper, there. <laughs> Esper and three other for a 3-6. <laughs> Hexproof from artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. When Nivinural Urborg Tyrant enters the battlefield, create a tap 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token for each creature that died this turn. When it dies, you may pay one when you do destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. So it's a card that has a built-in, oh crap button, things have gotten out of hand, and I can pay one to blow everything up. But here's where the card falls short for me. As in these colors... Oftentimes you depend on mana rocks in order to get your commander out early, to get your commander out additional times, and each time this dies, it is destroying your stuff. So unless you have like a dark steel forge or ways to give all of your stuff indestructible, it just seems kind of counterproductive for me sometimes. I really feel like this is either an S or a what, and I'm not really sure where it falls in between. It seems like it has got so Use all that OP white on. land ramp, exactly. I mean, there is stuff like land tax, and, and there are great ways to ramp in white, but I know that that's mostly a joke because, you know, green-red is generally, you know, green is where we are ramping, and there's no green on this card, so... Um, well, you're blowing, oh, so your point a, is you're blowing up all your artifacts that got, that got you to the cast here, right? And then on top of that, I mean, I guess... So it doesn't say Planeswalkers. I really like the idea. Somebody in chat said Planeswalker Tribal. Luke, Planeswalker Tribal might be cool with this because you're bl constantly blowing up artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. 
um, but your walkers are going to stay. And so if you can get some white, I, I, we know that there are blue and black pl uh, planeswalkers with some of the most bomb ultimates in the game. And so if you can just destroy everything until you ultimate off with three or four crazy walkers, then that's not a bad strategy to take. For me, I mean, it's like, how are you going to cast this a second or even a third time? This this looks like a one-cast Larry here, and comes onto the battlefield, does its thing. It's got a OS but a sh oh shit button when it when it dies, you just pay the one. <sighs> no, I and I'm I'm looking at chat here because you know everybody's got different opinions for this card, and I do see it has a May, so you don't have to. And that's true. You don't have to blow up everybody's stuff if sure. people don't have things to blow up. So that's nice if you are trying to build a board. And yes, there are indestructible mana rocks like Dark Steel Ingot and stuff like that. So uh, definitely things to think about. However, I don't think I can rank it at a... I don't know. What are you feeling for it, Joel? I don't think it's an S. I think it's an A just based on the fact that it's got... A built-in board wipe. I mean, it yeah, has a built-in board I mean, board it's wipe. exactly right. It's got so much. That's the crazy part. A built-in board wipe. It creates two twos if your creatures died this turn. So if you can board wipe for super cheap, maybe with a Navinural's disc, right before you cast Tyrant, float the ar artifact mana you've got, cast Navinural right after that. You get a big army. He comes on with an army. It's got hexproof from everything, but players pretty much. Um, you know, it's, it's just got so much. I think it's an A. I'm hesitant on S for this one. I think it's very, very powerful, but very yeah. balanced and has as many, you know, drawbacks yeah, as gift it does. Yeah, Gift of Immortality is really good on him. Sure. That's yeah, true. exactly. Well, and I mean, if you've got, if you build it Artifact Tribal, right, you run, you know, uh, what's it called that turns all your artifacts indestructible, and then you're rolling pretty because you can blow up everything. Your artifacts stay um you know if there's any kind of blink which you've got in blue and white when it enters the battlefield create a 2-2 zombie for each creature that died you can blink this a lot and get a lot of army 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 going so um i do think i do think it's an a you know i don't think it's a uh, quite an s yeah um, i'm 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 right there are we gonna see an s where are the s's i don't think i, I don't i don't know if we will next up we've got nimrus Una's Trickster. We'll go back over the list at the end and see if there's any we sure. want to adjust. Nimra's Una's Trickster is a one black, one blue, three other, one six, flashing, flying fairy knight. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of those cards in your hand and the other into your graveyard. So you're playing Flash Tribal. You want to play mostly instants in this deck or creatures and art, uh, uh, permanents with Flash. You really want to be living at least one spell per turn. Uh, per opponent's turn yeah, so that yeah. you're drawing more cards and you're filtering through your deck and you're getting to whatever your win con is that you've built into this but i do think that there's a lot of potential for a blue black flash deck to be obnoxious to play against and possibly very powerful but I, yeah you know, it's I love not that. the strongest thing we've seen yeah, definitely not the strongest, but I would rank this card at a solid B, and it's just because every single removal spell, this turns everything, like counters and removal and control, every single spell that you're casting is someone swinging at you, Doomblade it, and now all of a sudden you're getting a card off of that kill, or go for the throat, or whatever. Every single time, if you opt on your opponent's turn, I know opt isn't one of those cards that we really want to jam into our commander deck, or a brainstorm is going to be a better example, but now every time you're casting that, you're getting more value off of it. I think it's a, I, I think it's a good, solid card. Love that six toughness. I would rank it at a solid B. Yeah, I agree with you completely. Look at Obeka Brute Chronologist next. All right, one red, one black, one blue, one other for a 3-4 target player whose turn it is may end the turn. So Final Fortune uh, dot deck, a glorious end dot deck. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of like where I'm at with this card. I think it's really cool. Love the art. It kind of reminds me of a troll from, uh, gosh, what's that starting troll zone right out of... Uh, right next to Durotar that you start at. It looks like one of the trolls out of World of Warcraft. I am seeing a lot of the letter S in chat, and I just completely do not agree. I think that the potential exists Sinjen for... Village. That's it. Thank you, Jank. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Jank's That's got... It. Jank's like a living Scryfall, walking Scryfall. Um, Obeka for me is... There is one deck. There's one deck that you can build with Obeka. It's got 
70 cards <laughs> that are, well, let's not say 70, let's say 30 cards. It's got 30 cards that are going to be in everyone's Obeka deck, right? You got to have some of these effects to really take advantage of the players who player whose turn it is may end the turn. But past that, do I think it's ridiculously powerful? I don't. It's a 3-4. We've got, it's uh, obviously... It's a, oh, combo it's, a, it's a combo deck, yeah. Power yeah. toughness doesn't matter. The 4 is actually EDH decent, loves, but on it... Loves combos. For sure. I I completely agree. Sacrifice this creature at end of turn. Anything that's like return it to its control, return it to its owner at the end of turn. You know, a lot of theft with it. I think that... I don't think it's an S. I think that there's an argument to make it an A, especially if you're playing some yoink decks with a lot of cheap yoink effects that say, you know, give it back at end of turn, or really anything that says, really thing, any anything that says until end of turn. Um, you know, you can, you can really take advantage of it like that. I don't know about how fun that is to play. And again, there's not, there's just not a, a lot of room with this commander for like, wiggling outside of the deck building that it obviously entails that's the same problem that i have with arkelos arkelos there's like a deck there's a deck and you need to run the same 15 to 20 cards that everybody's running to if you really want to take it that way unless you want to build like you know mirrors meme deck and only build cards into it with mirrors in the art or something like that that's the only way to really branch out but if you're trying to build yeah. a powerful deck a strong commander deck it's it's pretty narrow you have to run yep. the same cards. And I personally don't like stuff like that. That's why I don't like Arkelos. It's, it's why a I'm not combo a deck. Fan of it, 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 but sure. the thing is, is I think because it's a combo deck and because of that potential, we need to give credit where it's due. As we are saying at the helm of your deck, and I know that we're the yeah. classy casual channel, but the fact that you can combo off with it so effectively. And in these colors, you know, these are a lot of the most important permission colors. I mean, let's be honest. Finding that that removal well, to kill CEDH, this, it does require honest, two with, removal, too, to kill it. So yeah, the audience should know that we don't have we don't have um, much CEDH knowledge or experience. And so, you know, like a, a cheap ish four is pretty much the top end of CEDH commanders, right? Sure, sure. Um, you know, it could, it, I, you know, a, a CEDH player is going to break this for sure with all of this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. At this spell, yeah, like you said, the stack gets exiled, and so targeting it is nearly impossible. It would be very obnoxious to try and try and remove this as long as, you know, you're ending your turn, obviously. I'm falling on A. Where are you falling? Yeah, I think we're going to... I, you know, now that I, I feel like we could just delve in with chat and have a whole discussion about the card at this just point, Obeka, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I definitely think that it's a card that we'll have to revisit in the future. And I will rank it at a solid A just because it, it is a very, like if it had versatility in different ways to do other things, but other than its specific, very niche effect, I might rank it an S, but because it does pigeonhole you into one specific kind of deck and, and the line that you're trying to do. Uh, yeah, it just seems, it seems like an A to me. Yeah, for sure. Ray of Master Smith's up next. Boros for a 2-2 two -two This one's artificer. not going to be nearly as difficult to evaluate. Whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, that creature gains double strike until end of turn. This is a what? Um, this is a 99. This is a great, great card in a nine in the 99 of a Boros attacking auras and uh, equipments deck. But since we've got literally a better version of this coming up here in a few cards, that's definitely a what, and we can move on from it. Jake, do you have anything else to say about no, Rayev? No, I don't. I don't. Talk to us about Thalys. All right, one black, one white, three other, legendary creature, human cleric, three, four, at the beginning of each end step, create X, one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying, where X is the number of tokens you created this turn. So I know that there's something I'm not seeing here that's just absolutely broken with like anointed procession and cards like those and, you know, obviously like divine visitation and those kind of things. I think there's definitely good ways to exploit this card. However, on the surface, just kind of like it, it, just gets aced easily in my mind. It's not super difficult to answer, but well, it is a very strong card. And uh, yeah. like the the other uncommon that we 
um, evaluated earlier that we ranked at A tier. I don't think this will be A, but I definitely see it being one of our better uncommons. Yeah, I think that, you know, this goes in the 99 of, a again, a commander that does it better, one of the Tases, stuff like that. I saw in the chat, yes, yeah, Smothering Tithe is like the best card to play alongside this card because it is just checking number of tokens you created this turn. doesn't have to be token creatures. That's true. Um, but any, any, uh, any ability for at any end step to double the amount of tokens that you created that turn, that's pretty solid. And especially on your turn, if you're creating five to 10 one, one spirit flyers or bird flyers or angel, whatever, any tokens like that, you're able to double that. That's pretty solid in my mind. So yeah, uh, where would you fall on this one? I would rank it at a B. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on B. Yeah, I would rank it at B. Uh, why don't you go ahead and talk about this one, and then I'll go ahead and rank it shortly after you get done speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Two year Eric Claw is a one green, one red, one one human warrior, two two. When it attacks, it gets plus X plus X until in a turn where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. It's an S, right, Jake? Yeah, we told Taylor Rogers that he was going to be ranking this card. So Taylor with the S. That's it. We do see an S. Let's go ahead and talk about the new uh Let's go and talk about the new Yurlock of Scorch Thrash. Oh no, yep. everybody's gonna freak out here. <laughs> one green, one red, one black, <laughs> one other. For Yurlock of Scorch Thrash, it's a 4 4 Vaishino Shaman. Vigi, a player losing unspent mana causes that player to lose that much life. T pay one, tap it, and you've got a signet for Jund. Bro, I creature. love this card so much. Yeah. I love this card absolutely so much. And it does have mana burn built into it which is cool but for me i love that for one mana you're getting you know essentially a dark ritual out of it or a signet a signet plus one one yeah. mana so very very cool card if your opponents can't use that mana now granted you're going to have some opponents that are going to be able to use that mana if you give if you give it to them if they have reactive spells right. draw spells that they can do at the eot but with great power comes great responsibility is that what we should say with this because while you are ramping your opponents will be able to say something about it so it's very group hub very group hug it has mana burn built in which is an ability we haven't seen for sort of so long slug, love the art love the for. colors mana efficient I, I would rank the card at an A. Yeah, I'm with you on A. The gifts of Jund never come without a price. That's the Jund version of with great power comes great responsibility. Everyone um, saying S, talking about Umbra Mantle and... Oh, yeah. Your luck no, has got a lot of... Your luck yeah. has got a lot of combos. Any creature that's going to... I mean, really anything that's going to pay one tap and add three of any given color, even if it's specific, there's the potential for infinite combos. There's the potential for breaking there. You know, honestly... It's it's a very fun commander, and I can't. This is one that I really can't wait to build around. Much like uh, Tuya Bearclaw, um, Zara. <laughs> no, Zara, hold on, hold on. We just need to help people because is Tuya really a S or is this just a meme? It is. It is a meme. We're gonna put it at what? Just because if you're playing red green, there's so many other good commanders that come to mind first when you're thinking about like uh, like. Omnath, for example, just building around battle for Zendikar Omnath, just like ramp, just play ramp spells. You're going to get this go wide elemental theme. This just for me is so. Blech. So nothing. Zara, yeah. Renegade Recruiter, Jake, here's one that you like. One red, one blue, three other for a 4-3 human pirate flyer. When Zara attacks, look at defending player's hand. You may put a creature card from it onto the battlefield under your control, tapped and attacking that player or a planeswalker they control. Return that creature to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Y'all, Jake really likes yoink effects, and he's going to tell us about Renegade Recruiter. Yeah, I would run it with, like, makeshift munitions, um, witch's oven, any kind of like goblin bombardment type effect, anything that's going to allow me to just, I, I love that the commander has Yoink built into it because now I get to swing, take some attack out of trigger. Hand. It's yeah. not a combat damage. It's an attack trigger. Yeah. You know it's, on, easily... it's on the attack trigger, which is great. So, you know, you're going to be able to read the table, figure out which opponent you need to swing at, which one is most likely going to have uh, cards that Zara is going to be able to exploit because, you know, if you're going to swing at, you know, the blue black deck, there's a chance that in their hand they're not going to have a big beefy creature. But if you're swinging at, you know, the red green deck, the most likely 
they might have something in hand that's going to be very powerful. So, right. uh, while I wouldn't say it's like a top tier kind of card, I think the effect is fun. I think it's powerful. I like the the flying. It the evasion is good. The three toughness is a little lackluster. It's a little bit expensive at at five cost. But when you're playing stuff like Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, you know you're gonna have Jeweled Lotus. You know, let's just talk about you know the turn one situation where you Jeweled Lotus Zara and then you swing the next turn and find the Eldrazi that's hanging out. I know we always talk about Eldrazi. <laughs> But now, <laughs> it's the best yeah. thing you can do in Commander. Yeah, you gotta I mean, play Eldrazi in your deck. <laughs> there, and if you do have the sacrifice effect, you're gonna avoid putting it back in your opponent's hand. But here's the thing: if it goes back to your opponent's hand and they can't play it the next turn, swing at them again and get it again. So yeah. I think the card is is actually pretty fun. Whether or not it's very good is difficult to um, difficult to evaluate. Again, you start thinking about stuff like you know, the uh, the Locust God or other really good red-blue generals. You know, you like to play Karanos, for example. There's a lot sure. of great options in red in red blue. So um this one doesn't this one doesn't fall into that category for me though because the the mechanic here is unique um from those. And so I you know if if anybody if a new player experienced player came to me and said hey would you help me build Zara I would be super into it because mechanically I think that you could have a lot of fun with this card uh, put some yoink effects in there put some theft effects in there uh, really lean into the pirate thing give your stuff haste you know obviously you're still going to run cards like I would say Lucas God and stuff goes yeah in telepathy the comes to, to mind Jank says telepathy again Jank with all the was... really good additions here yeah oh yeah definitely Punisher was talking about Thassa if you can blink whatever you take obviously you get to keep it that kind of thing Zara for me is like a solid B like very B um, yeah like it's I, almost it, like B plus and it's like yeah, holy yeah. crap we might even see like down the line that it ends up being an A and people are really abusing it and getting yeah. a lot of value out of it it comes down uh, to like the fun value here and you know honestly it moves up to a if this was like three or four and maybe the power toughness was a little bit lower but great at, pirate though at awesome five, heat yeah. for pirates yeah exactly so that is the commanders y'all that are in the base set these next two we're going to go ahead and include while we're talking about our 32 new non-reprint non-partner legends these are from the commander pre-cons and the first of those is wyleth soul of steel one white one red one other two two human warrior with trample when it attacks on the attack trigger draw a card for each aura and equipment attached Good. to it i am a huge fan of this i've already made two videos on it is this i think one has been posted beast of a card it is so it, it i get this more high on this card commander the more i needs. see it right like why are we even evaluating uh, the the bell borcada cheese red white card right. when we have this here which is just good on the surface it's everything that red white needs as far as like being able to draw and keep your hand full yep. and getting the most out of your artifacts and enchantments i think it's just an absolute fantastic card yeah i think that this card will be played for quite some time the um the upgrade video that i posted about it already had a great reception i've got a three ways to build coming out very soon about this commander i think that they gave this is yeah that in attack my opinion, on trigger is just ooh baby that's that's right that's I on mean, the you, that's on the you trigger, can draw baby. That's... protection you're drawing into you can fill up your deck at, the problem with these decks these mm. aggro decks it's velocity you run out of steam you can't do anything else once somebody knocks you down and honestly there's so much cheap equipment that gives it haste you play this out of the command zone haste it attack wherever is going to be the safest to attack refill your hand this card has so much potential to get you to an end game with boros that other commanders just have never had the best choices that you've had previously in boros is having your commander be your end game play aurelia out of the command zone something like that and so you've got a guaranteed plan over there you just got to get there with your deck this bro i wish this card wasn't there. human and had eight arms like that character from mortal Kombat, <laughs> because that's what Goro. we're doing with this card let's be honest that's what everybody is doing with this is like auras and weapons i mean this needs i wish this art and I wish that they would just like release a secret layer of it where it's like a mutant version of of Wyleth and it has eight arms and it has like all the swords like yeah. feast and famine, body and mind, every single sword possible in all of its hands. 
no, I think it's a I think it's a great a great card, and it is probably the closest that I'm going to go to S today. Yeah. However, I just don't know if we're going to give out that S. A couple cards got very very close, and I don't think AC is going to get the S today. No, and we'll we're see. about to talk about AC. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, tell tyrant us about AC. of Gyre Straight or Gyre. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. One blue, one green, four other legendary creatures. Serpent for a 5-5. Five, five. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. To be explicitly clear, this is the commander that will be at the helm of the Precon Reap the Tides, which is releasing alongside Commander Legends. We just talked about Wyleth is the other commander in the uh, in the red-white Precon deck. But AC here, pretty cool card. I like what it does. It is very strong. Um yeah, it's wildly I mean, powerful. It's, it's wildly strong. powerful. It's I mean, it's, it's two of the best things that you can do in Commander, right? Put lands on the battlefield and draw cards. That is that is like top two strong things to do that 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 will get you victories. Um, you know what? Maybe AC and Wyleth are our S's today. I think they did put some very, very strong <laughs> commanders at. I, it's just, it sucks not giving out an S. What was the last thing that we gave an S to? Well, look, so let's let's agree. We'll say ACA according to the way we've been going so far. Let's yeah, close sure. this up. Let's look at the tier list itself, okay? And if we need to reevaluate anything, now's the time. No, we are not going to go back through all these cards, but we will glance. We will no, glance No, I want to talk through each of them individually, Jake. Obviously, I was talking about glancing. Is there anything you think here, especially stuff towards the beginning, that we maybe overrated underrated or are you happy to lock this in i'm Give looking at that zombie wizard an s <laughs> i'm looking i'm looking at liesa okay look you know what jake you know what chat gets one chat can i was rank, gonna say can, chat can you, get one you pick one i'll pick one and chat picks one to move up from a to s how about that that's how we're gonna do this my choice obviously for moving to a from a to s is going to be liesa shroud of dusk just so we can get some you know these are the top powerfuls we got ansel with the Nine conspiracy hans imagine. erickson hans erickson moves no, up to s no, for j no do not put it back down there <laughs> Chat, I need you to be typing right now. I need you to be telling us which commander from the A line you want to move up to S. We're going to go with a majority down there. Very democratic society we have. You know what? Jake I'm going to go with Magic. chat and I'm going to go with Obeka. Just because of the absolute combo potential of the card. It was a card that while we were evaluating, I was saying, you know what? I really do think this card deserves an S just because of the colors and the combo potential. Whether or not it's going to be fun to play against is yet to be seen, but there are so many infinite combos in those colors. And uh, Jake, ugh. and yeah. you glanced through chat, but right now it's looking like Jake, like a chat has voted for AC. So our S is today for Joel, it's Liesa. For Jake, it is Obeka. And, and for part chat, chat on that. Yeah, yeah but and yeah. part chat and AC has voted AC has voted, been voted to the S tier by our chat group. Jake, that is a tier list. I'm going to throw us here into the outro because I want to remind everybody that we are trying to hit 10K by the end of the year. And so if you are watching this after the fact, we are now in the outro. We've got our serious outro music playing, and that means we need you to get down there. Hit that join button, hit that subscribe button, hit that like <laughs> button. Jake, this is how we tier list. Whoa. I do like this. This is very nice.